My name is Joki Ngomi. I co-wrote the script with Jim Chuchu. And my name is Jim Chuchu and I directed the film. Uh, Stories of Our Lives is a film, I'd say it's a collection of love stories about queer people in Kenya. <laughs> Welcome to the Berlinale and the, the Teddy Awards as well, the Queer Film Prize of this festival. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's not your first time in Berlin, you've been here before. Yeah, but not. But you have not experienced that atmosphere of this festival, so. It's my first time well, and it's absolutely oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope you'll enjoy it and just dive, dive into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first question is actually when when did you choose to realize this project? Was there like a specific time when you said, okay, now we're we gonna do it, you know, well, practically like real life? I think we started it as a research project, so we weren't really thinking of it as a film. We went around the country recording stories, yeah. and then after recording a couple, like around 40 or 50, we, set, we, we thought maybe it's better to make a film, mm -hmm. short films out of these stories, because yeah. some of them, like a book wouldn't suffice, yeah. a report wouldn't capture it, so we figured let's do some, some mm -hmm. short films. Mm -hmm. and somehow that became this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how, how long did you shoot? Was it all happening it, it in was sequence, or was it? Like we shot whenever the scripts were done, so we'd shoot and then there'd be a space of between two months, one month. So overall, it, it took about a year. A year and a half. To, a year and a half yeah. to finish the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the last film was shot just a month before the premiere. <laughs> uh, how would you describe the, the process of shooting? Was that all peaceful and you just, you know, were busy realizing it and not really dealing with, oh. I don't know, attacks or what, how, how how was the atmosphere? Well, there was this thing we used to do where <laughs> every now and then we'd ask ourselves, what are we doing? Like, you know, when we're shooting a scene, mm -hmm. we're like, Jesus Christ, what are we doing? But the answer we said, we're going to give ourselves this, we'll figure it out once the film is done. Because mm -hmm. that was the only way to, to not let the politics that we could see coming mm -hmm. get in the way of producing the film. Mm -hmm. So once the film was completed, then now, we could ask ourselves, what the hell did we do? <laughs> <laughs> and like actually on, on set was, was really good. Um, mm -hmm. We never had any problems during scouting locations. And there was one actor. Yeah. Who we, yeah, we did have quit. one actor who quit. Why? On, because on it was too, too, yeah. hard, too hard of a time. Yeah. So we had to recast quickly that morning. How did you find the actors and actresses? Well, we used actors and actresses who are pretty known in Kenya. Mm. Um, they're, they're on TV, they're, they're doing all kinds of things. And then we also did auditions, and so we had auditions for, for straight actors, for LGBTI identifying actors, mm -hmm. and we just kind of reached the point where we decided to use whoever was going to whoever tell the most truth with the part. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had a mixed, like, those all sorts. Those first timers, there were yeah. veterans, there were straight people, there were all sorts of people. <laughs> Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's kind of the first production or like filmic production that comes out of Africa, produced and directed by African people you know, about that topic, like the first big, bigger thing. I, they must, they must. Because I know so many, well, so many, but like <laughs> compared projects where, you know, Westerners or uh, particularly white Westerners would, you know, go and deal with that really heated topic and, um, and then leave. Huh? And, and then, then leave, leave, and it's very, it's very problematic, you know. It's a, and it's such a complex topic, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never really heard before, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I did my research was not well enough. That like a project that made it into the Western kind of like you know film festival spheres and whatever. Mm -hmm. To um, but with a perspective from you know people from that region. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, I, what do you, I, what do you I, think? I, I, I mean, that was one of the things that made us want to do this, that we hadn't, hadn't seen, seen, hadn't seen a lot of, of these kind of documentaries mm -hmm. coming from outsiders, and even calling the film stories of our lives was, mm -hmm. was political in that sense of mm -hmm. wanting to reclaim 
the story. And even choosing fiction as opposed to the documentary format. Mm -hmm. Because it's a thing of like African films about this have always been documentaries. Mm -hmm. And we're like, there must be some imagination that you can do around this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, then African is com com complicated too because it's it's uh, from a certain region, you know. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. So many things. I guess maybe there's something more content from South Africa. But mm -hmm. um, in what way is it like Kenya, like a, um, like a local production too? Um, how would you describe it? Or say? Oh, um. because I think I, I mean, maybe I can suggest something because I think uh, the la I mean the the, the um, scenes like that do not happen in the urban, you know, like more rural. Yeah. I, I'm not that familiar with Kenyan culture, but I feel that there is something, you know, the, the, the agriculture and the, the daily life and everything. I, I thought, I, w I was reading it, the way I interpreted it was like, maybe like something specific to that culture. Well, and I guess the, the, story, the film was influenced so much by the, the, we visited all kinds of towns across the country to also get us an experience of how it is to, to not be in the city and to be gay in like a remote town, mm -hmm. in a coastal town. Um, and so the film kind of tried to pick up the, the essence of all these stories that are not necessarily city, yeah, city not based. Yeah, like necessarily yeah. urban, because that narrative is global, where people mm -hmm. feel like they need to move from a rural area into an urban area to have a more free experience of living your life the way the way you were born, you know. And um, we, we found that there's, there's, there's a lot of narratives of stories mm -hmm. in rural areas that still haven't reached. One, and stories that were universal mm. in terms of like being in love with a straight friend. Mm. It's something that happens <laughs> all the time. Anyway, yeah. 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 So it's, it's simultaneously kind of like regional and universal, you would say. Yeah. Okay. Um, how were the reactions you experienced in, I know that you were in Toronto, um, but then going, going back? Because I saw an interview with you that happened right after the premiere, and then you hadn't been back probably around that time, so you were. Facing, had to face that. Yeah. Sorry, going back. How yeah. was that? Uh, going back was uh, we were we didn't know what to expect because again this has not had been done before, mm -hmm. so there was a lot of concern and a lot of friends were writing to us and say if anything happens, you know, you can come and stay with us. Mm -hmm. um, but then we got back home and there was I think the interest in seeing the film was greater than mm -hmm. a negative reaction to the content of the film. Mm -hmm. And then when the film was banned, then it also just increased the interest in seeing the film mm -hmm. and shifted the dialogue into freedom of expression mm -hmm. and how can a film, how can a Kenyan film be banned? What is it about this film that adults in Kenya can't see? Mm -hmm. So it shifted and shifted. it became a larger conversation about you know, expression. Yeah. So how did you, did you encounter any government people or like official people? Or? Oh yeah. Well, the film, the film <laughs> did end up being restricted in Kenya by the Kenya Film and Classification Board, mm -hmm. which means that um, it cannot be viewed or sold or distributed within Kenyan territories mm -hmm. um, in its current form. Mm -hmm. We were not interested in changing the form of the film, mm -hmm. so we just kind of reached there. And then um, our executive producer, one of them, George, um, was yeah. picked up by a group of people from various government departments, including the police. And the, including the police, mm -hmm. um, and they they pressed char uh, charges against us. So mm -hmm. we were able to get him out on bail, and so now he it's, was in prison. No, he, he was he was he was taken and he was actually arrested. Okay. But then we got him out on bail. Yeah. Right. yeah. So now like the the fight is between the legal teams on both sides um, regarding how that goes. We do have a hearing pending, so we're figuring okay. that out. Okay. Yeah. How does that feel? Well, how do you move every day and you know. <laughs> One day at a time. I suppose, uh, I think the, it's very interesting to be in a place where you make something and then the state reacts. Mm. Like, mm. when you're making a film, you're not necessarily thinking about how mm. the state... How to provoke the state, state or... Gonna, yeah. yeah. Mm. And it's not something that many filmmakers uh, ever have to think about. What will my government mm. think about this? So it was an interesting learning experience for us about how political film can be. Mm. Um, and how political the silencing of the film can be. Mm -hmm. And so. how political love is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What, are, what, what is your agenda? Do you have an agenda? Do you have a, a, <laughs> do you have a, a, a <laughs> taking it one step at a time? Or what is, what is the goal? Um, yeah, I think we just have to take things one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Because like now we're here and it's like, when we make this film, it's like we didn't really think 
will be standing in yeah. festivals. And yeah. yeah. So. How how was what, like who you just talked to the Heimlich Bird Foundation or like people there? What did they what did they say? Like what, how do people react? Like what do they? Well, I think there's a lot of interest in like in the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening with like homosexuality in Africa and, mm -hmm. and what's what's the future of this debate? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's a it's a it's a debate that's very it's hot right now. Mm -hmm. Hot is such a wrong. It's not the word for it, but because this debate spills over into things like freedom and, and love and all those things and so and like our history and, and the, the the legacy of, of things like the anti sodomy laws that came from the British and how does that how do we go forward and fix the past and all those things. So uh, the conversations we're having around the film are about um, Africa, about our neighbors Uganda and, and how they're doing. Um, so and how we move forward in discourse like this as as partners and as equals, not as um, the West just kind of helping us, helping Africa to catch, catch up. up, which is like a problematic way of seeing it as Africa is behind, yes. and so you have to help them to catch up because that that construct kind of creates more problems. Mm. Yeah, you will encounter a lot here in Germany. I can prepare. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah, yeah. had versions yeah. of it here, mm. but then. I, the thing about Germans we felt is that, a, that a lot of people are listening. Mm. Definitely, yes, yeah. Definitely. But there is still that savior narrative. You know, it's big. Yeah. In Europe in general, I think. And I feel like uh, um, if you compare it with like America, God, we are doing this hunting. America, like, I don't know if America has a listening stance for this thing. I feel like whenever we come to Europe, people are, are interested in hearing what we have to say. Um, Today, yesterday, we discovered that the U.S. Secretary of State is uh, creating this office, which will have this guy who champions for LGBT rights around the world. And I'm like, you're not listening, because it's having, not having an unique. American come into the country and say, you guys need to do this and this and this, isn't, it's not going to help. And also, it's, the, it's, it's what has been done already. And you're going to you're yeah. going to strengthen the idea that it's a foreign thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is what? What can you do? As a, well, you have a collective already, which I think is something very powerful. If you build a group of people, yeah, there's ten of us, mm -hmm. so there's just this, just two. And <laughs> but I was also thinking, because I was thinking about it a lot. My I, my mother is German, my dad is from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. so I consider myself being a part of the African diaspora. And I was, you know, I was really wondering, like, what's my role as someone who's moving in between two worlds a lot? You know, like mm -hmm. the European and the African. And I know very well what. That, but it, you know, like I mean, I can only speak about the Ethiopian view, but um, it's a tough topic. <laughs> it's a yeah. very, and it's and you have that Western like offer, but at the same time, you know, it doesn't really help. Mm. You know, you have to do it yourself. So, what do you think about this like African diaspora? Because there's a lot. You know, we're all over the world yes. spread. You know, <laughs> yes. And that's very powerful too. It is. And we're spread in every country, basically. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. So, is that something helpful to you, or? Definitely, we, we yeah. yeah. I mean, like, especially because, like, when we come to festivals and we meet Kenyans mm -hmm. who come to see the film, mm -hmm. and it's always so touching because then we live abroad. We right? live abroad. Yeah. Like, we met yeah, yeah. a couple of people here who said they they want to see the film and they're mm -hmm. happy. So it's always nice to kind of go outside and meet people who, who get identify it. with similar struggles mm -hmm. and who get it and who mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a contact to the Kenyan embassy here? No. No. Okay. <laughs> we're trying to did limit they, our they interactions with the state. With state, because I mean, like currently, okay. we're okay. you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One interaction at a time. Do you have more films planned? More art projects planned? Definitely. Um, we, maybe, we just or? we just finished a fashion film called To Catch a Dream, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. um, was showcasing the work of eight different designers from Kenya. From mm -hmm. Kenya. Okay. And we did a, a cool thing there with like some languages that are kind of going extinct. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, in combination then, with fashion. Yeah. Actually, fashion. one of the, one of the one of the the, the actors spoke Tigrinya. Oh really? Like, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we are now working on the on the book of the film mm -hmm. because like the, all the recordings you did. The uh, just a, stories not the script, but just like a like a like the book because mm -hmm. like we have all these stories and stories and, yes. and the film only captured a small section of it mm -hmm. and you feel like the book provides a greater perspective for the whole topic yeah, yeah. so that's what we're working okay. on yeah wow i wish you all the best thank you enjoy the festival and i hope <laughs> that you'll meet so many people and <laughs> 
be inspired and go back more encouraged. Thank you. And I mean, I guess it really helps to know that there's a lot of people watching you and that sometimes, you know, <laughs> stops other people from attacking you. Yeah. 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 But thank you so much. Thank you so much.